Hey guys, this is Kal from TechLingo. With almost everyone working from home these days, having reliable internet speeds is really important. And this is why Google has kindly reached out to us to have a go with their latest Wi-Fi mesh solution, the Google Nest Wi-Fi. Now, if any of you have been facing some trouble with your home Wi-Fi setup, allow me to give you some tips and suggestions on how you can improve your internet experience. So if this is something that you really like, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tips just like this. Without further ado, let's get started with our full review. Now, do allow me to clarify first that this does not replace your current modem. You still need to be subscribed to an internet service provider, an ISP, whether it's at Singtel, Starhub, M1, or even MyRepublic here in Singapore. Now, majority of our homes here have a fiber termination point. So it's most likely located in your living room. And if you head on down, you would actually see uh, this yellow cable, and that's the fiber cable. It's really tiny, connected to your modem first. And from the modem onwards, uh, you can actually see that it's connected to a router. And that is the part that you can change with the Google Nest Wi-Fi router. Now, before we get started, let me just give you a quick rundown of what a mesh network actually is. Now, in a mesh network, you have multiple nodes. And all these nodes are connected to each other in their own particular way. So in case one of these connections uh, get disconnected, the node is always still able to connect uh, to the internet with the help of the other nodes that it's connected to at the same time. Now for the Google Nest Wi-Fi solution, you have a single router that acts as like the primary device. So you always have to have it around. And additionally, you can always uh, you know, introduce add-on points. Uh, so you can have as many add-on points as you like. So what we have here is a one plus one setup. But of course, you can always increase it up to one plus two or one plus three, you know, have as many end points as you like so that you get your entire home covered in the mesh network. Now let us share with you our setup process on the Google Nest Wi-Fi. So to get started, simply just download the Google Home app, which will serve as an interface for your entire Wi-Fi management. And we found the entire process to be really seamless and quick. And we're really happy that Google has made this entire setup process really easy for the average user to operate. Next up is some tips that you can follow for placing your router or your Wi-Fi points, and that is to place it up as high as you can. So put it up on a shelf away from other electronic devices, especially kitchen appliances like microwaves, which could interfere with Wi-Fi signals. Now, the next thing that is really important to note is that you know when you are setting up the mesh network, uh, the placement of these add-on points are really important. Uh, you have the Google Nest Wi-Fi router, uh, firstly the main device with the modem, uh, and that's probably going to be in your living room. So let's just say uh, that you have the router in the living room, and uh, you have this bedroom, the furthest away from the living room, that always has uh, really bad Wi-Fi connection. So you are definitely not going to place uh, your first add-on point in that bedroom because uh, there is probably no way for the add-on point to even connect to the router in the living room. So uh, I think what's best you can do down here is to place the add-on point in between the living room and the furthest bedroom. So that way, the add-on point can still communicate with the main router and uh, the add-on point will then kind of rebroadcast the signal so that the other bedrooms, uh, even the furthest bedroom, can receive it really well. Google claims that a single router should be able to give you coverage for up to 120 square meters and you have a one plus one configuration that bumps you up to about 210 square meters and you have a one plus two configuration, you can achieve up to 300 square meters. Now, if you're living in a multi-story apartment, uh, I would suggest to have at least one point per level. So if you have your router in the first level, you should have an add-on point in the second and another add-on point in the third level. Now, something to note is that regardless of any mesh solution that you're using, uh, as many add-on points as you put, uh, probably the signal would get more degraded as the number of add-on points increase. So that's something to just keep in mind. So for my house in particular, uh, before we set up this mesh solution, uh, I actually did a test, a quick test uh, of how the Wi-Fi situation is at home right now. And I can tell you that um, even with my original router, 
uh, in the living room, the furthest bedroom wasn't able to receive any signal at all. And this is probably due to how uh, the entire house is uh, layout is done because uh, the furthest room has uh, the Wi-Fi signal, you know, has to go through many different walls. And the furthest room is also at a really awkward angle. So over the years, I've tried repeaters, uh, power line adapters uh, to try and mitigate this problem. But I think what really helped in the end was that uh, when we renovated the house, uh, we laid uh, a LAN cable to every room so that uh, we could kind of set up an access point even at the furthest bedroom. And that was uh, one of the best solutions that you can go out for. Uh, but of course, if you're talking about the average consumer who does not want to go through all that technical hassle or you know, having to learn how to lay their own LAN cable uh, to each of the bedrooms. Uh, here is where the Nest Wi-Fi really comes to help. So after we set up the Nest Wi-Fi solution in our house, uh, what I realized was that the furthest bedroom was now able to achieve speeds of up to 95 megabits per second. You know? And this is an improvement from receiving just zero. And we achieved this because we placed the add-on point somewhere right smack in the middle of the house, uh, somewhere in the corridor, so that the bedrooms can actually share the Wi-Fi signal from the add-on point. And the add-on point can still uh, properly communicate with the Nest Wi-Fi router uh, in the living room. So what's great about the Nest Wi-Fi solution? You know, what are some perks that you get uh, by using the Google Nest router? And in the Google Home app, you firstly would be able to set up a guest network. So when you have extended family or when you have friends coming over to your home, you can use a totally separate wireless network. So it's a totally different Wi-Fi name or Wi-Fi password so that the devices that are connected at home wouldn't be mixed with the same network as the guest Wi-Fi. Parents would also be happy to know that you can group uh, devices together to kind of schedule the Wi-Fi. Uh, for example, if you want to cut off Wi-Fi signal to a bunch of devices from 12 midnight, you can totally do so with the Google Home app. The Wi-Fi point is also a smart speaker featuring the Google Assistant. So it's not just uh, an additional uh, Wi-Fi access point that you place in your bedroom or anywhere uh, that just serves a single purpose. But now you have a Wi-Fi point that has the Google Assistant built in so you can ask questions, you can play music from Spotify, you can even play games with it. So all the existing Google Assistant features will be built into the add-on point. So I think that is, uh, that is really great touch. Now one thing that I felt was missing on the add-on point, which may not be really necessary because this is supposed to work as one ecosystem, uh, but let's say if you have a home that already had LAN points laid out to all the different bedrooms, uh, like my house, uh, I'll be happy to know if I could use the add-on point uh, as a bare bones access point. So I just plug in the LAN cable to the add-on point and I'm able uh, to use it in bridge mode and broadcast Wi-Fi. But unfortunately, I can't do so because the add-on point doesn't have uh, a LAN port. Also, the current Nest Wi-Fi model does not support Wi-Fi 6 and the technical term is 802.11ax. Now, of course, if they really did include uh, Wi-Fi 6 support for this model, uh, you're definitely going to see a sharp increase in price because it's a really new technology that is probably be coming up in the next few years. Uh, but do keep in mind that devices like the latest iPhone 11s, iPads, or even uh, Android phones, like the one that we just reviewed in our last video, the OnePlus 8, already supports Wi-Fi 6. So um, if that's something that you're really looking out for, uh, the current Nest model that we have here does not include Wi-Fi 6. Now, before we end the video, I just want to touch on some points for all those advanced users out there. Uh, is that the Nest Wi-Fi does not come with an admin web GUI, at least at this point of time when we're filming this video. A lot of the routers in the market right now uh, have the admin page that is accessible at the router's IP address, but you cannot do so with the Nest Wi-Fi router. Uh, it's only configurable through the Google Home app at this point of time. And if you already have an existing router at home and you wish to connect the Nest Wi-Fi router to the same network, you can definitely do so. But do remember that a double net NET will occur. And that means you're not able to do things like port forwarding uh, through devices that are connected to the Nest Wi-Fi router. 
And of course, you can always change the Nest Wi-Fi router uh, to bridge mode uh, using the Google Wi-Fi app. So you have to download another app to configure this. So when you do change the Nest Wi-Fi router into bridge mode, uh, do note that you will lose the entire mesh functionality uh, in the add-on point. That means you cannot connect any add-on points that you have if the router is in bridge mode. So that's quite unfortunate because I thought uh, if you know we could use the Nest Wi-Fi router as like a wireless coverage for the home uh, that coexists with your existing router setup. I thought that would be pretty cool, but unfortunately, at this time when we tried it out, it doesn't work. So if you do operate the Nest Wi-Fi router in bridge mode, do note that it will only operate by itself and no add-on points uh, will connect to it. Now in conclusion, would this be something that we recommend? I would say yes, because it really provides an easy way to set up a mesh network at your own home without any technical knowledge at all. You know, you just download the Google Home app, just follow the instruction. It even auto detects that you have a new Wi-Fi router or add-on point, and you can easily just add it to your home network. So it's really great for the average consumer. Now the Google Nest Wi-Fi is already available in Singapore through the Google Online Store. Uh, the router will cost 229 Singapore dollars, while the add-on points each will cost 199 Singapore dollars. So let me reiterate that you just need one router and you can always have as many add-on points as you like. Uh, so it's just one plus many points, right? And the Google Nest Wi-Fi is priced quite similarly, uh, if not cheaper than the other mesh solutions that are available in the market. For example, the Linksys Velop or uh, the Netgear Orbi. We hope you've enjoyed this video on our experience with the Google Nest Wi-Fi. Don't forget to like this video and click the subscribe button along with the bell icon to stay notified whenever we post new videos on TechLingo. This is Kyle, signing off.